Well, good morning to you all. It is lovely to see your half faces here today. Uh, I'm going to begin with what may seem like a strange announcement, but you know where we are right now with the times that we are in. We are making sure you understand it is okay if you feel uncomfortable coming to church at this time. It is okay if you want to stay home and and, and there's smaller groups out here. I love having you here, but I also want you to feel comfortable uh, if you decide to come to church. So it is okay to spread out. It means it may mean you, you don't get to sit in your usual traditional seat if you need to spread out a little bit. There's always a nice big balcony up there if you feel that need. I want you to be able to come here and be here and not be worrying about every little thing. We will always be live streaming, so you can always catch worship uh, at home that way if you want to join us that way. If you are wondering how can I do that, I don't know how to do that, uh, we in the office will be glad to walk you through how to get to the videos. There's three different ways. The easiest way is always through our website. Now that one's not live. Uh, it gets posted a, a little before noon, but you can always get to worship uh, that way. It's, it's the easiest one. For those of you who feel like, oh, I don't know how to do the internet stuff, you can get to our website and find that. That's, that's, the, that's really, really easy. Uh, so we are, this morning, yeah, we've got some folks who aren't feeling well. Now, I will say, Meg is not one of those people. Uh, she just needed a little Sunday morning break, so she's taking that break today. That means we will be still having youth tonight at its usual time. Remember to bring your mask. We will be inside, and we will have to be masked all the time while we're inside, but we will be meeting for youth at the, at the usual time. I know Caroline's not feeling good. She's thankfully COVID negative. Uh, there's, this, there's, there's also this nice little cold that's spreading around, which saying, hey, hey, I, I might be COVID, or maybe I'm not, ha, ha, ha. But um, again, if you're not feeling the best, hey, we love you, stay home. So, uh, I don't have many other announcements than that, except to, again, as always, uh, point you to the bulletin where there's lots of good information in the back. Uh, tomorrow night for elders, if you wish to attend, we're going to have a elder training session at 6 o'clock, and it is kind of covering the basics. If you sort of feel like, hey, I kind of know how to do this elder stuff, you don't have to attend. Uh, it is only for those of you who want a little refresher or just to ask questions or if you feel like I need to understand the basics, I, I feel a little lost sometimes, there's that. And then our new session will meet for the first time on Wednesday at 6, so that is also happening this week. Are there announcements or news that we need to share that anybody has? Everybody feeling okay? Yeah, yeah. We'll make it through all this. Shift and pivot, that's our motto. Shift and pivot, we'll find a way. We'll find a way. But right now, let us turn our hearts and our minds to the worship of God.
Please stand for our call to worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Do not fear, for the Lord has spoken. Saints, let us worship the Lord our God with the singing of our first hymn, number 177, I Will Come to You, You Are Mine. May be seated. And if you were like me, you were probably singing the wrong words at the wrong time, but that's okay. They're good words, aren't they? The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Trusting in God's grace, saints, let us Confess our sin together. Merciful God, in baptism you promise forgiveness and new life, making us part of the body of Christ. 
We confess that we remain preoccupied with ourselves, separated from one another. We cling to destructive habits, hold grudges, and show reluctance to welcome one another. We allow the past to hold us captive. Open your heart to hear the voice of God now speaking to you in a time of silence and personal prayer. In your loving kindness, have mercy on us and free us from sin. Fulfill the promises of our baptism so we may rise to new life and live together in grace. As a voice from heaven said to Jesus, so in Christ God speaks to us. You are my child, my beloved. With you I am well pleased. Saints, know that in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And let that joy well up in you as you stand and greet your neighbors with the peace of Christ. <laughs> peace be with you. I'm just going to wave at you. That's good. That's good. <laughs> peace be with you. Peace be with you. So good to see. Uh, I think what we're going to do is Wednesday night in the fellowship hall uh, to give us a little. And you may be seated. And the children we have, if you want to, come on down. Join me here at the baptismal font. Here, come over here. Come over here. Come over here. Waiting here for Charlotte. She's making her way. That's all right. We can wait for Charlotte. Hey, Miss Charlotte. Okay, so I've gathered you around the baptismal font today because today is a, one of those special Sundays that we celebrate every year. It comes always after Epiphany when the wise men, the Magi, show up, and it is the Baptism of the Lord Sunday. So it gives me an opportunity to talk with you about baptism. What is that? That's a great question. What is this? Water. It's just water. Do you know where this water came from? From where? No, it didn't come from a pond. From a house? Somewhat, you're getting close. Yeah, Can't, there's a, did you know there's a sink out here in the hallway? It's just water from the sink, from the 
from the tap. It's just ordinary water. And for a number of you, you have been here, you've come here when you were small, like you and you, because I remember you, because I got to put water on you. Yeah, but I don't think I got to put water on you. I think that was before or something. Yeah, you can. Go ahead. Here. Can you reach? Yeah. Just water. Nothing, nothing interesting. But, yeah. There you go. But now something about this water, we use this water as a way to talk. Doesn't that sound weird? This is a way that we sort of talk when we bring people to this thing and we take the water and we put the water on them. Maybe you've seen, I know you probably don't remember, but lots of times people come as babies and I get to hold a baby and I put water on their head. When people come to here as grown-ups and I put water on their heads, I always take like big handfuls of water and go whoosh. You know, I really like when they're, when they're grown-ups, I like getting them wet. Yeah. But this is a way for us to talk. This is the way for us as this church, as a church, to say, hey, God, we believe, God says, you're important and you belong to God. And we say, hey, God believes you're important and you belong. And, and all these people out here have come forward. And it's kind, of the way, it's kind of the way that we sort of think about each other. All right, let's move away from the water a little bit. It's exciting to be at the water. Come on. But it's the way we kind of think about each other. It's kind of, it's kind of like it's the glue that holds us together. So when you look at people out here, when we see somebody, we say, hey, wait a minute. God has said that you belong to God, that you are God's, and that's important. We need to remember that. So let's say I'm very mad at you. I'm angry at you. And we're having a fight about something. Somewhere in the back of my mind, I have to remember, hey, wait a minute. You, like me, have been to that thing. Whoops, which has gotten a little hurry there. <laughs> We've gone through that water. We've kind of heard the message that God says, you're important, you're mine, and I've got to keep dialing back and remembering that. So why we may disagree about something, we have to work together like brothers work together to solve a problem or to find your way. No, don't set yourself on fire. We're, that's a whole different symbol. Yeah, no, 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 no. no. We're dealing with water today. So the... There's, there's that wonderful thing that what knits us together as a community, as a church, what holds us together all the time is knowing that God loves you and God loves you. And God, I know we say this all the time, that God loves you and God loves you and God loves you and God loves you and God loves you. And, God loves you and, God, and we're a part of that and we have to remember that and how we treat one another inside the walls and then how we go out into the world and remember that about the world. But God thought everybody's kind of, everybody's important. We can't just throw people away. We need, to, we need to find what's important in there. We need to keep going. We need to embrace that. Okay. That's about it. Is that enough? Yeah. Yes. Come on. I know we're all masked, but we've already been together and we've got our hands wet together. Can I have cold, wet hands? Cold, wet hands? Hold my hand, even if it's just a fingertip, even if it's just a fingertip, boop, 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 hey, don't leave, oh well, we'll have to, we'll have to embrace them with our imaginary hug, Lord, we do thank you, and we try our best to remember every day that you have reached out to claim us, that whether we're perfect or not, because most of us are not, you still say you love us and that you are mine. And for that, we are thankful. It is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. You got more wet? See you guys.
First reading today comes from the book of Acts, but before we hear these few verses, let us go to God in prayer. Gracious Lord, we are constantly relying on your spirit to move us, to enlighten us, to open our eyes, to open our ears, to open our hearts, to motivate our hands and our feet, to teach us and guide us in this life. So we rely on your spirit as we come to these words. We rely on your spirit to give us understanding to make these words alive in us, to help us to see that these are not just stories from some time ago. These are our stories, and they help to form our language. It is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. So our first reading from Acts is chapter 8, verse 14, which is interesting because We're kind of going backwards. We're we're hearing from the sequel before we go back to its original movie, uh, which is the Gospel of Luke. Let's hear what Acts has to say. uh, Chapter 8, starting with verse 14. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. And the two went down, and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. And now we move to Luke's gospel, starting with verse 15. Uh, It is 15 through 17, and then we'll skip and do 21 and 22. And this, of course, on baptism of the Lord Sunday, is the story of Jesus being baptized. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them, saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff He will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. Since this is the word of the Lord, Thanks be to God. I guess I can take that off. I forgot all about that. On these special Sundays that we celebrate yearly, there's always, there's always these certain ideas as a minister that I'm supposed to hit in my sermon. When you celebrate baptism of the Lord Sunday, then you've got to, at some point, ask that question, which I've asked with you before, why was Jesus baptized? So let's, let's go ahead and, and get to that right up front. Compared to the others coming to the Jordan to be baptized by John, you know, Jesus doesn't really fit the mold, does he? To use Luke's words, John comes proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. He wants those gathering and joining him in the river to bear fruit, worthy of repentance. In Luke's gospel, John's exhortations to bear good fruit, it's very practical. And it's every day. He tells the crowd, you you who have uh, two coats must share with anyone who has none, and and whoever has food must do likewise. Tax collectors and soldiers are told 
not to take advantage of their positions for their own gain. I mean, these words, there's nothing spectacular in the words. They're simple, decent, practical repentance. Because you see, repentance isn't just about being sorry about what you've done in the past in the hopes that all will be forgiven. It is a recognition of the sin in your life now. You know, that much is certain. It goes beyond that. And repentance is the real change moving forward. It is a change in in thinking and living, a change that is to affect every part of your life, in your work life, in your political life, in your relationships with family and friends and strangers and fellow church members. John doesn't he doesn't give much room to those who think that they can, they can sort of talk their way around making real change. I mean, when John talks about bearing good fruit, right, it's more than poetic language. It's the means by which our repentance will be measured. Empty talk or ritual, it, only ri- uh, that type of repentance, it's just not going to work. You know, every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. You know, John doesn't give us some sort of easy middle ground. He's not a middle ground kind of guy. There is no repentance without a real turn towards the ways of God. There is no repentance without real action. So why then would Jesus come to John to be baptized? Why does Jesus need, or what does Jesus need with a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Well, when it comes to Jesus, this is less of a baptism and more of an anointing. That's one of those ideas that we need to express on this Sunday every year, and that I'm sure I tell you every year. John anoints Jesus in the same manner as the prophets of old anointed the kings, Except instead of using uh, an oil, John anoints Jesus with the waters of baptism. And the whole idea of an anointing permeates our language about Jesus. When we call Jesus the Christ, even though we've added lots of extra meaning to that word Christ, at its root, all we're saying is Jesus the anointed. You know, our English word Christ is a variation on the Greek word Christos, which means anointed. And the same can be said for Messiah. Again, we've added all kinds of meaning to that word, but at its root, our English word is a variation on the Hebrew word that means anointed. And God's prophet anoints God's chosen. At its core, that's what's happening here as Jesus is baptized. Even what God says to Jesus is connected to the anointing of the kings of old. You are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. Well, similar language can be found in the second psalm, in verse 7. A psalm celebrating the anointing of a king. I will tell of the decree of the Lord. He said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. You know, Scripture even speaks of the kings of old being filled with God's Spirit at their anointing. While the language and the image of the dove may be be different, the idea behind it, not so much. So almost everything in Luke's telling of Jesus' baptism points us towards this understanding of Jesus being anointed like the kings of old. And if that's all we focused on with this baptism of the Lord Sunday, you know, I would have done my duty. It would have been enough. I had checked the box, right? But I want to take a bit of a turn with you and focus for a minute back on John's description of this one who is coming. This one who he is unworthy to even untie the thongs of his sandal. You know, John talks about this one coming. And to be honest, on the surface... It sounds kind of scary, all that burning and unquenchable fire talk. These verses have been used by many to sort of create a a fear 
that some believe is necessary to bring people to repentance. It's like you can't, you can't bring people to repentance just by telling them the good news that God loves you. That's, that doesn't seem to be, we've got to, we've got to attach some fear or it just doesn't work. I don't believe that. Hopefully you don't believe that. And I've just gone way off, so I have no idea where I am in my sermon here. I feel like there's lots of rabbits I'm wanting to chase this morning. It's that kind of rabbit-chasing morning, so I'm probably going to do this a lot. I'm going to lose my place and where I was in the sermon. So let's look down and see if we can find. Ah, there we are. But when you look at the whole of chapter 3, right, of Luke's gospel, and not just a few verses, it's clear. It's clear that John's message is the same throughout. Again, that message is, bear fruit worthy of repentance. The one who is coming will purify you to the point that this is the only type of fruit that you can bear, that you will bear. You know, water, we know water washes, and as Andrew was looking at the fire and making me a little worried, we know that fire is supposed to purify, it's supposed to burn away those impurities. And John is, John is expressing the limits of his baptism. He calls us to repentance, to our turning back to the ways of God on our own volition. But our own turning is limited. I mean, even with John, even with this wonderful, wild prophet and his baptism of repentance, there is only so much that we can do alone by ourselves. Sin will always find a way to eat into and erode our repentance. Sin will always work against our discernible actions in this life. Because you see, if, if John's call to repentance was enough, then there would be no need for anyone to come after John. If we could fully repent by our own volition, then we would have no need of a Savior. But as it is, there are two actions taking place in the early chapters of Luke's Gospel. The action of our repentance is being connected with the earlier action of God's incarnation in Jesus. We turn to God in a real way, a way that, that produces real fruit, a way that is more than an empty promise to do better, or I'm sorry for the way I've acted or the things that I've done. And at the same time, God is turning towards us through the incarnation, through a son, Right? Being given. We don't repent to a far off, distant God, but to a God who is who's already here with us, a, a part of the crowd. Now, Jesus' baptism in the waters of repentance for the forgiveness of sin is a promise of the coming good fruit that, that is sin resistant. Because not only have we turned to God, right? But God has fully turned towards us. Jesus is anointed in the water of the baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And from that moment, that water, it becomes a, a gushing spring throughout his ministry. And I pray will gush through ours as well. As God's anointed, what will Jesus use to lead the people in repentance? Jesus will embody repentance itself. And he will call us to follow him as he, as he journeys along on God's path. Jesus always calls us to follow, to join him, to walk with him, to serve by his side with our own hands and our own hearts. Jesus' own journey, it, it starts there in the river, right? Wet, his feet muddied, starting that journey with us, like us, among us. Reading through Luke's gospel, Jesus will call us to bear good fruit along the way as he encounters the sick and with the hungry and, and with the lonely that they come across and with the dispossessed. He will lead us to put down our, our stones of hypocrisy and judgment and privilege that we're always ready to fling and hit somebody with so that our hands will become empty of the fear and of the hate 
so that we might instead offer you know, some forgiveness to the fellow sinners that we meet along the way. He will teach us about the immeasurable grace of God which never stops seeking the lost until they are found. And the joy of God in embracing every prodigal along the way. Now this gospel will go on to teach us that if we are going to be the wheat that is useful when God, or that is useful, see I've messed up again. If, let's start that sentence over again. It's that kind of morning, isn't it? Where was that sentence? I've lost the sentence entirely. Ah, there it is. This gospel, I feel like I've blown it now. This gospel will go on to teach us that if we are going to be the wheat that is useful, then God must separate us or from us the chaff of sin, that the unusable chaff must be burned away completely in the unquenchable fire if our good wheat is to be used as part of the bread of life. You know, anointed in the waters of repentance, Jesus will take on the fullness of repentance and forgiveness and call us to continue to follow him down this same road with our own cross. I mean, there is just something so right with the image of these, these few verses of Jesus there among the others who have come to the Jordan, who have ventured into the Jordan I mean, my mind always goes here again. I always feel like on these Sundays I'm saying the same thing, but, you know, this crowd wet, right, with the waters of repentance and their feet covered in mud. Because when when you leave the river, you're not going to leave the river clean. You're going to leave the river dirty and muddy. I just love that picture of my mind of Jesus also there in the crowd. And there's no way to discern him from anybody else. And they're all, they're all a part of the body of Christ. They are all there anointed in some way. And if you believe, if you believe that you are too old or, oh, I, I'm too young or I'm too rich or I'm too poor or I'm too busy or I'm too important or I'm too burned out or I'm just too unwilling or I'm too whatever the case may be, then you're not wet and you don't have muddy feet, you're still standing up there on the shore because you're finding ways not to go in the river. You're just staying nice and dry and nice and clean. You know, friends, repent and, and bear the fruit worthy of repentance. Turn away from what is keeping you separate and, and join the body of Christ and all of its messy call to service. Be immersed right? Be immersed in these waters of baptism. Oh no, I'm walking away from the pulpit. You know, today, today we're going to ordain some new elders. And if there's one thing we've learned coming into this third year of COVID is we need elders who are going to be wet and have muddy feet and really kind of get into things. We can't play that distant, far off uh, this is the way it's done. This is the way it's always done. We, we've got, and what I love about the class coming in, we have to kind of take some risks coming up. We can't just play it safe anymore because those days are gone. I know like you, we hope that, well, let's get back to where we were three years ago, Right? We're not going back to where we were three years ago. It's, that, that door has closed. Some of you may be thinking, well, let's get back to where we were five years ago. Or, you know, 10 years ago was really good too. I like 50 years ago. Let's get back to that. Saints, we ain't going back. The church isn't going back. It's not, well, that's, that's standing on the shore all dry thinking. We're going to have to step through the mud. We're going to have to get wet. We're going to have to do terrible, hard stuff make some hard decisions. I hope I'm scaring the, three, uh, you know, the two of you who've never been ordained, and where's the other one? The one who's coming back again? 
But that's part of us being the church here, being the church now, trying to find the way that we grow in, in, in the soil that surrounds us, that we still, I mean, the, the elders, what's great about the session is it they're that ruling, that ruling elder. They're, they're here to take the measurement of whether we as a congregation, as a community, are, are bearing that good fruit of repentance. That's, that's the ruling and ruling elder. Did you know that? You knew that. You know everything. You're just looking at me now. Do you know everything? Mrs. Treywick, do you know everything? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. We know you do. And that's all right. We look to you to tell us these things. Now I've gotten lost again in my ramble as I chased that rabbit. I lost the rabbit. But that's all right. That's the kind of ministry we're doing right now. A rabbit will show up. We're going to have to chase those rabbits. We're going to have to chase them down, see where they take us. And I'd have no idea where it's going to take us. And in one way, that's exciting and fun. It's also terrifying. But the thing is, we will get there together, and we will walk down this unknown path that's in front of us. And somewhere here, there's an amen, right? Amen. amen. Thank you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. <laughs> I know, some days you've got to really just go wherever it's going to go. But, is this the hymn that we know or don't know? We don't know this hymn. <laughs> this is the hymn that's going to be challenging too. I think all the hymns are challenging today. But that's all right. That's the terrifying, fun way to go. We meet, we meet the new challenges that are in front of us. So, the best you can behind your mask, let us stand and sing hymn number 479, Ho, All That Thirst.
who join with me in the litany for baptism of our Lord. In the beginning, darkness covered the deep, and God said, let there be light. Through the words of the prophet, the Lord said, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Do not fear, says the Lord, I am with you. I have called you by name. You are mine. The voice of the Lord is the Lord. When Jesus was baptized by John, suddenly the heavens were opened. The voice of the Lord is the Lord. And as Jesus was coming out of the water, the Spirit of God rested on him like a dove. And a voice said, you are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. Almighty God, you anointed Jesus at his baptism with the Holy Spirit and revealed him as your beloved son. Keep us, your children, born of water and the spirit, faithful in your service, that we may rejoice to be called children of God. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And you may be seated. And at this time, I would like to invite Mary McGurk forward. And Tricia Walls forward, and Summer Willer forward. And just to make sure, our, you're going to have to stand right here. <laughs> All in a nice line. Ah, you look great. And Shanna could not be here because of COVID. So, yeah. If you'll join with me in our sentences of Scripture. There are varieties of gifts, but it is the same Spirit who gives them. God works through each person in a unique way, but it is God's purpose that is accomplished. Together, we are the body of Christ and individually members of it. We are all called into the church of Jesus Christ by baptism and marked as Christ's own by the Holy Spirit. This is our common calling, to be disciples of Jesus Christ and servants of our servant Lord. Within the community of the church, some are called to particular service as deacons, as ruling elders, and as ministers of word and sacrament. Ordination is Christ's gift to the church, assuring that his ministry continues among us. Through ordination, God provides for acts of care and compassion in the world, for the ordering and governance of the church, and for the preaching of the word and celebration of the sacraments. Representing the one holy apostolic church, Catholic and apostolic church, the session of Parkway Presbyterian Church now ordains Mary and Summer to the ministry as ruling elders. And we also install to active service the one who has been ordained previously, Tricia, as a, as a ruling elder. which means I get to now the constitutional questions. And these are important questions, because if you're wondering, oh no, what have I been elected to? These questions will give you a hint. So in baptism, you were claimed by the love of God, clothed in the grace of Jesus Christ, and anoint it with the gifts of the Holy Spirit to share Christ's mission in the world. And now you are called by God through the voice of the church for new service and ministry in Jesus' name. 
In accordance with the Constitution of the Presbyterian Church USA, show your commitment to this calling by responding to these questions. Do you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, your Savior? Acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? If so, say, I do. Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be, by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ and the church universal, and God's word to you? If so, say, I do. I do. do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do and will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? If so, say, I do and I will. I do and I will. Will you fulfill your ministry in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of Scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? If so, say, I will. Will you be governed by our church's polity and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them, subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? If so, say, I will. I will. Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? If so, say, I will. I will. Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? If so, say, I do. I do. Will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? If so, say, I will. I love and because I like that one the best, and it is the last one, let me remind you again, energy, intelligence, and here's the hard one sometimes, imagination and love. Those are the greatest tools you have in your toolkit. Those four things. Should we wait for the sirens to disappear? <laughs> and finally, this question. Will you be a faithful ruling elder watching over the people providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline, serving in councils of the church? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? If so, say, I will. And now you get to answer questions. Do we, the members of the church, except Mary and Summer and Tricia and in absentia, Shanna. Um, I've lost my place again. As ruling elders, chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ, if so, say, we do. And do you agree to pray for them and to encourage them to respect their decisions and to follow as they guide you, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is the head of the church, if so, say, we do. You join with me in prayer. Gracious and eternal God, with joy we give you thanks and praise throughout the ages and in every place you have chosen servants from among your people to point the way to salvation by your grace. We are grateful for ancestors in the faith who followed without fear, placing their trust in you alone. For judges and monarchs who ruled in righteousness and peace, for prophets and apostles who spoke your bold words of mercy and of truth. For leaders and teachers in every age who have nurtured your people in faith and faithfulness. Above all, we praise you for Jesus Christ who came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life to set others free. Anointed by your Holy Spirit, he proclaimed your reign on earth, revealing your saving love, 
and all he said and did. Since two of you are brand new elders, I invite you to come forward. And because we are COVID-y, if you have served as a minister, as a deacon, as an elder, I invite you at this point to just stand where you're at. And we're not going to gather and lay hands on, but I do invite you to bring your hand forward, and we will in that way lay hands on. And I invite the two of you to kneel if you are able. You can do one knee is fine, or both. You're committed. You're all the way. And let us pray. Gracious Lord, as we heard in our reading from Acts today, it is your spirit that guides us, that leads us, that fills us, that helps us to step out, to take risks, to follow Christ in his ministry, to lead others with compassion and love, to push one another to the best that we can be in our faith. So we thank you for Summer. We thank you for Mary, who have now stepped forward, who have said yes to this question to serve as ruling elders in this church, especially at this time, when the road ahead is unknown, when we don't know what the next day will bring, when predictability is just not there like it used to be. We pray that your spirit will give them courage every day, that their hearts will open, that they will remember that they've not been chosen to do the work by themselves. They've been chosen to lead the congregation, to bring us all, to help us all grow in our faith and discipleship. So we thank you for them. We pray that you will be with them every day in these three years as they do seek to guide us, as they make decisions, sometimes easy, sometimes hard, as every day they remember that they are disciples and you are their Lord. Christ, we are yours because you claimed us. You have said, these are mine. And for that, we are thankful and we respond with our own repentance, and we pray that we will bear the good fruit. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may stand. And welcome, <laughs> welcome, welcome, and re-welcome to service as ruling elders at Parkway Presbyterian Church. If we could give just a quick round of applause. As I always say, it feels like there should be more. This is when we should let the confetti drop or the balloons go. Um, but this is what it is. <laughs> so again, we welcome you and we continue. You may take your seats. We continue in our worship now with the giving of our tithes and our offering.
join with me in prayer? Gracious Lord, we are thankful for all the gifts that you give to us. We pray that you will increase our discipleship, that we will see an increase in our love for one another and a desire to serve. All that we have is yours. And now hear us as we pray together the prayer you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. I think our final hymn is one that we know better. <laughs> hymn number 543, God be the love to search and keep. songs. It is a day of new challenges. It is a day of new ideas and new mo mo uh, movements through the Spirit. I'll get the words right here sooner or later. And how do we meet that tomorrow? We don't know. Why? We try to support our faith with goodness. Bring that goodness out. We try to support that goodness with our knowledge. And then we take that knowledge and we add a little support of self-control there. And with our self-control, we need to endure and not give up. And endurance, well, the only way to do that is to constantly seek God. And in our seeking of God, we remember that God strengthens us through our mutual affection, that the support comes from one another of being a part of a community. And we can't have this community without love. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen.